Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to show you something that I've been working on for a while. It's a vox voxel engine. Uh, and I've been writing this using my game engine that I've showed you in my previous videos. Um, and the reason why I have been working on this is basically just to test out the limitations of my game engine. I wanted to see if, I, if it was possible to make this. And obviously it was. Uh, so, as you can see, it kind of looks like Minecraft, <laughs> uh, but I can actually tell you that that is not the goal of this. Um, so, but let's just fly around here and look, look, look around a little bit. Uh, the lighting is a bit glitched out right now. Um, I think there is some floating point issue when I'm calculating the distance to the light because the light works perfectly for the first couple of chunks uh, around the zero coordinates. Uh, you can see the lightning works great here, but as I fly away, uh, the, uh, the normals for the top of the uh, faces, sort of, uh, the calculations are sort of off. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but anyway, um, it works, so uh, everything works sort of like in real Minecraft. Everything is divided up into chunks, uh, 16 by 16 chunks. And uh, uh, every chunk has one single draw call actually. So if I fly into this one, you can see that all the uh, meshes or all the faces inside of here are actually not drawn. And I'm also using frustum calling. So only uh, what's being, only things that are inside of my uh, rendering view is being rendered. So everything outside of the screen is not being rendered, which increases the performance a lot. So that's pretty cool. Um, so uh, let's actually go into more technical stuff. I think that could be fun. Um, so, um, to render uh, all of, to, uh, obviously each block has its own like block type and its own sort of textures to be rendered. And the way I solved that was to uh, implement uh, Atlas textures into my the core engine. So now you can actually send in a whole uh, sprite sheet to the uh, uh, shader and then you can shift it using coordinates to change textures. So uh, let's actually open up the code here a little bit. I'm using a new uh, recording software, by the way. Uh, I used uh, Kazam before, but now I, for this video, I'm using uh, OBS. And I haven't really gotten the recording quality to be as good as my other software, but... Uh, I think you'll be able to read the text anyway because I have increased the font size a bit for this video. Uh, but basically, if I go into the uh, the chunk that's C here, this is actually where all the block types are being defined, sort of. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? I thought it was here. Maybe it isn't. Oh yeah, it's here. So. Uh, when I'm sending the vertices to the uh, uh, graphics card, I have I have uh, implemented this shift X and shift Y coordinates for uh, right after the uh, uh, the normals here. So, for example, the block grass has a shift X of zero, the block cobble has a shift X zero, and shift Y one, block dirt has shift X, etc. And let me show you this res uh, sheet.png. Uh, yeah, my browser sometimes takes a while to open, so we'll have to wait a couple of seconds. Uh, come on. I just started up my computer and it's always slow in the beginning. But yeah. Uh, so we have the block X here, it has a shift X of zero because it's here and the Y is defaults to zero as well. So this is X zero, Y zero. And then we have the block cobble, 
shift x zero it's on the x coordinate zero and the y one um, yeah you get the point so that's how that works and uh, I don't know if you're interested in seeing this but if we go to the uh, core engine here I can show you what it looks like in the shader as well uh, so I have this uh, here is the texture shift X texture shift Y and when I'm rendering the texture here, I'm just, uh, uh, or first I'm, um, yeah, X, Y here is, is the same as texture shift X, texture shift Y. And then I'm just uh, adding that to the texture coordinates basically. So that was not possible. It was not possible to do this before, but now it's possible basically. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we can close the browser there. And uh, I'm generating the uh, world using Perlin noise. Um, so in my, uh, I think it's being done here in the main, no, it's not, it's in the scene world. So I'm generating this height map here uh, using Perlin noise. So, uh, and then I also have this decor map and this decor map is actually uh, where trees and things like that are stored. Uh, the height map only knows how high the, uh, the ground is, basically. And that is being done through purling noise. And the decor map, like where each uh, tree is going to be, is also purling noise, actually. So I'm generating some purling noise. And then I check if the purling is uh, larger or equal to 0.98. Then I'm generating a, a random tree here. Uh, the tree height and the radius is uh, just random integers though. Um, so that works pretty good. Um, and maybe I should show you what I want to do with this. I'm actually planning on making a dungeon crawler. Uh, so let's uh, open up the browser. I'm going to show you a GitHub repository. Uh, Let's look here. I wrote a Mace generator a couple months ago uh, in Python. And I'm planning on porting this to C actually. Uh, here's a picture. I think I've made a video on this. So I'm planning on using this to generate uh, dungeon crawler maps where you can uh, walk around and then I'm going to implement some uh, some bosses and monsters and stuff that you can fight uh, using this. So that's actually my plan for this. But uh, um, for starters, I just wanted to implement the uh, uh, a terrain generation just for fun. So uh, there's no collision, collision detection yet, so you, you can just fly around. I did implement collision checking uh, and it worked pretty good, but I had some problems with it, like where um, if you were, if you moved, walked into a block that was right at the end of a chunk, then it sort of glitched out. Uh, so I just removed the collision checking for now and I'm, I'm planning on making it correct someday. Um, so there's no collision checking at the moment, unfortunately, but I will, that's the next step here to implement collision checking and also fix my lighting system a bit. And then after that is done, I'm going to start working on importing, uh, those mesas and generating them. And I'm going to just scrap this whole terrain generation thing. Cause I'm, I, I'm not going to have it. Um, uh, it was just for fun. So yeah well this proves that you can make uh <laughs> minecraft clones using my engine i guess so the frustrum uh, logic is actually in the core engine so if you make a game using my engine you can just use the built-in frustrum uh, math to calculate if objects are within view or not so it's really simple to use uh, what else is there to say about this? Um, I 
I think that's it. Yeah, the uh, lines that you see here, uh, the one on top of me is, uh, I think that's, I don't remember which one <laughs> that is uh, or why I'm rendering it. I don't remember what that is. But anyway, uh, this one that you see here is uh, just uh, uh, telling me where a chunk is. So this is the uh, zero, zero, zero coordinate for a specific chunk. And if I move, you can see that it changes. So I'm just trying to calculate which, which chunk I am in for the collision detection later. That's why I added it. And the uh, the rendered axis at the uh, at the crosshair or at the cursor that you can see that's the center of the frostrum view. Uh, so I just use that to uh, calculate where or to see where the frostrum is basically. I'm really wondering. Oh, now I uh, remember what this one is. This is the. Uh, the light, I have a light source attached to the camera, basically. So when I move, the light is following me. Uh, so yeah. Well, I just wanted to show you what I've been working on uh, the uh, last few couple, the last few two weeks or so. Uh, so yeah, I hope you uh, liked the, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.